this is Aileen Miracle from Mrs. Miracle's Music Room and today I'm doing a video about flickers um, and really how to get into the website and um, do a few things before you actually use the cards with your students. So um, it flickers is just a really amazing website and app <clears throat> that allows you to do really quick assessments with your students. Um, it's kind of like the idea of the remote control clickers that people use. Um, sometimes they sync up with their smart board but with these, it's completely free. So instead of spending hundreds of dollars on clickers, these are completely free. You just need to do a few things, like I said, on the website, which I'm about to show you, as well as download the app onto your iPhone or your Android device. And it really does work better with um, a phone. I have tried to use the iPad app and it really doesn't work. It keeps um, shutting down. So I would suggest using an iPhone or Android. So. Uh, the first thing you need to do when you get onto the website um, after you create an account is you'll want to print out cards. So if you look here, I'm just on the site www.plickers.com and then um, if you click right here where it says cards, you'll see these uh, cards right here that you can download for free. So I just did the standard um, because they have 40 cards and I um, the largest class I have because I have some split classes where I have some, you know, five kids from this class come to music on A day and another five kids from that class come on B day and that kind of thing. So the most I have in a class is I think 29 or 30. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the standard. And then here, all you have to do is just print. So they're two to a page. And now that you're looking at them up close, you can see um, that each card has a number on it, which will be um, the student's class number, which I'll talk about more in a minute. And then it has A, B, C, and D on it. Um, and I'm making another video after this that will show you how to hold the cards and what you see on your phone when you're taking the assessment. So here are all the cards that you'll need and you just you know go to file, go to print, and you go ahead and print them out. Um, I printed mine out on yellow cardstock um, the cardstock just for durability and I did laminate them. I have heard from some people that the lamination messed up um, the scanning like it didn't always scan every student's card because of the shininess of the lamination. I have not had that issue. The only issue I've had is that sometimes kids will want to put their fingers um, over a little bit over the black um, I call it it's like a Minecraft looking shape. Um, sometimes they put their fingers over that and then it won't scan. So you just have to, you know, want them to not do that. So after you print out the cards, I'm going to go back to the Plickers website here. Then you'll want to enter in some classes. So I'm going to go ahead and click on classes. Now, um, if you're a classroom teacher watching this, then you will only have to do this once unless, of course, you departmentalize. If you're a music teacher like me, then you would have to enter it in for every single class that you do. I would suggest that you maybe just start with one grade level. If you see here, um, I've just done clickers with third grade so far this year, and it becomes much more manageable when you just have to think about one grade level at a time. And then once you've done the work um, to enter in all of the names, then it's really easy to get those clicker cards out again for a second assessment. And you don't really, the only thing you have to do is create the questions and assign them to the classes, which I'll show you in a minute. So, but the first thing you want to do is let's say you're starting with third grade like me um, and you want to enter in students' names by their class number. So first you'll want to send an email to your classroom teachers if you are a music teacher or any other kind of special areas teacher um, and ask them for a list of students by their class number. Um, I know at my school, every single classroom teacher does that. I think it's a pretty common thing to do. And the students know their class numbers really well, so they could tell you, oh, my number's five or my number's seven or whatever. Um, and uh, sometimes, a lot of times, they'll do it alphabetically, but you know, as like kids move in throughout the year, you can't always rely on it alphabetical being correct. So you want to reach out to the teachers probably um, at least a week ahead of time when you're going to do the assessment that way you can give them a couple days to get back to you um, and they can you know I just tell them they can email it to me or they can put a list in my mailbox or whatever they need and then this this part is actually pretty easy it doesn't take too much time so you want to go to add new class and then let's say we'll just do sample class 
um, and you can go ahead and choose the grade. And then for me, I'm going to do music. And then here you can choose a color. Um, I like to have all of my grade levels the same color, so all of third grade, you know, could be this color. So then I go to save. And then you just go to where it says enter student name. Let's say Macy is number one. You can just type Macy's name and hit return, and boom, there you go. Now, if you have two Macy's um, and you want to enter in a last name, look, let's say I have Aiden and I have two Aiden, so I'm going to put Aiden E. Okay, third one, Jenna. And you just keep going like this. So, really, as fast as you can type, you can just go ahead and enter. It's like really super quick. So you can just go to, you know, 24 or however many students you have. There are some times where you will have, um, like, the teacher has skipped over a number because maybe that student moved out or something. Um, I've tried to do, like, a space, and that doesn't work, so I have just gone no one. <laughs> and that way, when I'm doing the assessment, I know to not look for number seven. Nobody has number seven. So after you do all of the students for that particular class, it just automatically saves it. And then you can go to, um, let's go to library. And they have some sample questions right here, um, but we're gonna create some questions. If you see here, I have um, uh, questions that I've used before. Like I had um, strings questions here um, for an assessment I made called strings or not, where they had to like look at um, for these, uh, let me see here. For here, like they had to look at a uh, picture of the violin, viola, cello, and bass and tell me, do these instruments belong to the strings family or not? So A was strings and B was not. Um, and then same thing with trumpet. And then I had some where they listened to an audio sample and told, told me whether it was strings or not. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a new folder here just so you can kind of see what that looks like. There we go. There's the new folder. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'll go sample. Okay, and then I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to go to new question. And I always like to start with a test question. Um, that way, especially when it's the first time students have used the Plickers cards, um, they understand how to hold the cards. So I'll put test, and then I'll just put A as being the correct answer, and I don't even need to fill out any of the answers. And then I'm going to put save and create new. Okay, and then let's say you have like a rhythmic question, like which pattern did I clap? And now for, you could just have the questions on a PowerPoint or something, or um, for your own reference, you could write out um, the different rhythm patterns, however you want to do it. D, let's do T T T T T T T Ta. Okay. And let's say that we want T T Ta T T Ta. We want B to be correct. So I just click this and then I go save and create new. And then you can ask whatever other question you want. So let's say um, which rhythm has two or yeah, which rhythm has two sounds on one beat. And for this, we'll just have two. We'll have TT or TA. And we'll click A. So I'll put save. Okay. So then let's say I want to ask those three questions to a particular class. I could go to add to queue and then just assign them to the sample class. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other two questions. Click on the question. And then click on the sample class. Now I did make the sample class uh, be third grade, and this is a little bit easier than third grade. I usually do that in first grade, but just so you can kind of see, you could really do anything you want. Sample. Okay. So now those questions have been moved into the queue for the sample class. And then the cool thing is, let's say I really want the test question to come first, to show up first on my phone. Then I'll go ahead and just hit that arrow there. So, so far I have printed the cards out and then I created the classes. So I assigned uh, numbers for all the students. And then I created the questions and then I assigned them to the class. So at this point, you're set to go. 
um, to go ahead and do the assessment with your with your students. And then the last thing that I want to show you is that um, if you want to see how your students did, then you can go to reports and then score sheet. And then you can choose um, whichever class you want. And then the, the um, date range in which you did the assessment. Um, I will warn you that if you do longer than a month here, it won't work. You have to just choose a month date range. And then you can go to apply. Um, I would show you with some of my students, but just for privacy's sake, I won't. Um, but the cool thing is it will tell you exactly. So it will say like Macy answered A for question one, B for question two, and then it will outline um, in red the questions which are incorrect so I can just look for Macy if I let's say, let's say I asked eight questions she got all eight correct um, and then maybe Scott got six out of eight correct and it'll tell you which questions were not correct so it is such a great way to do a really quick assessment especially as a music teacher when you only see students you know maybe once a week for 50 minutes is what I have and some of you may have even less so um, it really gives you some good data whether or not you want to use it as a formative assessment or as a summative assessment it could work for either and um, like I said once you create all of the um, you know classes and you enter in all the student names and you create the questions it really is so quick and saves you so much time and it's just a great tool to have so I hope this has been helpful um, and have a great day